Welcome back to the Monetary Hill No Rise News. We'll continue our pre-election analysis right now with public affairs analyst, former member, editorial board of The Guardian, chairman, editorial board of the National Daily, member, editorial board of The Sun, Mr. Chris Akiri. Good morning, sir. It's a pleasure. Yes, and we would like to just start it off from the one of the burning questions leading up to the elections, so although we know that the state elections, uh, state governorship elections will be held on the 2nd of March. Yes. But the latest development coming out from Zafara, how do you help us understand it? What's your own perspective on that particular, on the development and the role of the Attorney General in this particular issue? Well, it's, uh, I have not read the full, uh, the details of his letter to, uh, Enoch. to Enoch, uh, but, the way I understand it is that, you know, um, the ruling party wants us to dance to their music. They want us to think that Nigeria belongs to them and not to all of us. You know, because in 2015, when President Jonah, the then President Jonathan uh, decided to postpone the elections by maybe one or two weeks because of the problems in the Northeast, there was a furore. And the nation, nearly, they nearly turned the nation upside down for that decision. Now, I'm so surprised that this government, the, the then in opposition, is now saying that the, the election should be postponed, even if by one day. I mean, they should have cast their minds back and have decided that, well, it's not good. You, you take a look at what happened in 2015. I mean, these people will cry havoc. So it's taking us for granted. It should never be. And when the code sections uh, 38 and 39 of the uh, you know, election, uh, Electoral Act 2010 as amended by the Electoral Act 2011, they don't know that it's when everybody, they are talking of the entire country, not just one state, to postpone the election you know, by one day because of one state is anathema to the Constitution, and it should never be. That's my own reaction to that one. Uh, all right, so what's the difference between River State and Zafara? Because so is there Zafara that... State and River State are six of one and half a dozen of the other. You know, they go, go, you know uh, a court of competent jurisdiction ruled that, you know, the primaries conducted by APC were not properly conducted. Therefore, they should not go ahead and then present their nominations for the election. They went ahead to present their nominations in spite of the ruling of the court. And when you, disc you know, they, they, there are three arms of government, the, the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Each one of them has coordinate power. So when you want to, you know, um, play down on what the other one is doing, then you are breaching the Constitution. They said, don't do this. That's the ruling of the court. They went ahead to do it as an act of impunity. And well, I was not surprised when the Supreme Court eventually said, no way, they don't, they don't, they don't have any, they shouldn't fill any candidate. This is the same thing that's happening in Zamfara State, and they have to obey the, 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 the court orders. So if I may come in here, I'd like to read to you the relevant sections of the Act, yes. which the Attorney General cited in his letter, yes. just to see if it buttresses or contradicts your position. Yes. Section 38, yes. where at the close of nomination there is no candidate validly nominated, the Commission shall extend the time for nomination and fix a new date for election. Now, in the Zamfara context, yes. this does not apply. There are several candidates which have been validly nominated, yes. just not from the APC. Yes. So the elections ought to go ahead. Correct. So Section 39 says, subject to any other provision of this Act, if after the latest time for delivery of nomination papers and withdrawal of candidates for an election under this Act, more than one person remains validly nominated, a poll shall 
be taken. So yes. the elections in Zamfara ought to go ahead. Without it's to go ahead. It ought to go ahead because when they say, you know, that section 38 you read says, well, at the close of nomination, if there is no, if there is no uh, nominee presented by INEC, then the time shall be extended in order to allow for, uh, you know, a nominee to come up. But the, in this case, you know, there are 91, 91 political parties. It is not just one. So we should not bend backward because of one political party. That is, to, you know, doing that would mean that the party wants us to believe that they are the ruling party and they can do and undo. It's not so. Where there is no nomination, and there were several nominees, there were several nominees. So how can they? How how does that that section apply to this case? It doesn't apply. I, I agree with that Correct. assertion. Correct. And staying on the on legal issues, have you read the news that the um, Chief Justice of Nigeria, or no, again, sorry, the so chairman, the chairman of the CCC, yes. has issued a bench warrant for the arrest of the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogen. Yes. What is your view on this? He's issued the bench warrant, I suppose, based on Section 35 of the Constitution, yes. trying to compel his attendance. Everybody must—you have the right to a fair hearing, but you must stand trial. Yes. However, can he issue a bench warrant when jurisdiction over that matter has not been decided? Okay. He cannot. But to put it simply, he cannot. And um, I'm riled, you know, by this Onogen's matter. Now, first of all, before you talk of Section 35, empowering any court of, any court of competent jurisdiction to issue a bench warrant, you must talk of the jurisdiction of that court to start with. That jurisdiction is in question. It has been called into question. It has not been resolved. Number two. The Court of Appeal, which is the second most important court in Nigeria, ruled that every proceeding concerning Onoge, you know, uh, Justice Onoge now suspended, must stop at the CCT. So where is that now? How come after the, the Supreme, I mean, the Court of Appeal ruling that all proceedings at the, at the CCT must stop until the substantive matter is decided. What about that? Well, I mean, I mean, um, it is just by it is just by dint of comfortable, you know, resolution that we now think that CCT is a competent court. Otherwise, it's not a court of superior record as such. Now. The second most important court in Nigeria, the Court of Appeal, has ordered, that's a, a court of superior record, has ordered, and you know, that has appellate jurisdiction over all matters coming from lower courts, has ordered that you don't do anything concerning Nonoga, you don't hear anything, no, all proceedings must stop. Now, and all proceedings have not stopped. And the man says he's taking orders from, uh, taking orders from the presidency, and that's not true. You know, the judiciary is, is the third arm of government, which has coordinate powers with all the all the, the, the two remaining arms of government. That has to be understood. So the man is just taking the laws into his hands, mm -hmm. or because he says he's taking orders from uh, from the presidency, which should not be. Okay, let me ask you two questions based on what you've just said. First, on the Zamfara issue, should INEC go ahead and obey uh, the Chief Justice, uh, the Attorney General, beg your pardon, Attorney General of the Federation, Minister of Justice? Uh, what next? Will, will, what other steps will be taken afterwards? Because INEC insists that, you know, primaries did not hold. But here's a letter from the Attorney General of the Federation saying that INEC must uphold what the court has said. Uh, validating the uh, 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 junior court order, so to say, or a court less jurisdiction, a lower yes, court yes. Uh, jurisdiction. Should I go ahead and field candidates for APC in Zafar State? It's what not, next? It's not, it's not possible. Because apart from this, uh, the Court of Appeal ruling, you know, barring them to do so, mm -hmm. 
they can it's obeying the uh, Attorney General of the Federation means that they are obeying the executive and not the judiciary. You see, they must obey what the judiciary says, not what the executive represented by the Attorney General says. So that, that's, the, that's the answer to that one. And on the issue of the suspended uh, CJN and the whole uh, brohaha we are witnessing, what yeah. sort of crisis does this portend? Because we know going into these elections, uh, when the president does emerge, we do need a chief justice of Nigeria to swear in the new president. Yes. Do you think that uh, all of this would have been settled before then? And if it is not, what sort of crisis do we have on our hands? Well, that could be ironed out. It doesn't have to be the chief justice of Nigeria alone. Mm -hmm. Some other senior government official can swear the person is about. Um, a problem, a political problem has been created. When they suspended the, the CGN, you know, without fair hearing, you know, without reference to the Constitution, Section 36, I mean, Section 35 is talking of a fair hearing. Section 36 of Section 5 is saying, whenever a criminal is accused, whatever the, whatever the nature of the crime, he's allowed to speak in, in his own defense. That was not done. And now, then, they are quickly appointed Tanko Mohammed as a, the acting chief justice, you know, um, without the intervention of the NJC. Now, so, um, you see, we look at it that Section 292 of the Constitution says that you cannot, any, any, uh, you cannot dismiss or remove any judicial officer without the intervention of the, uh, of the NJC. The court, I mean, any petition must first of all go to the NJC, but in this case, it went straight to the presidency, you know, then to, to uh, uh, CC, CCB. Now, so that has been created. We have what, what, what I call uh, procedural immunity for all judicial officers, but that was not respected. Now, to your, back to your question. I don't, I don't have any... I don't think I have any problem with whether the matter is settled before uh, a new president is elected or not. Another senior officer in the, of the judiciary, we have justices of the Supreme Court there. They can be called upon to swear in the next president, so it doesn't really matter. But it's unfortunate that a, a political problem, a judicial political problem has been created. And uh, its resolution will be in the future, not for now. Hmm. So it may not be ironed out before the swearing in of, of a new president, because the, the, the wheels of justice grind very slowly. Let's come back to what the major assignment we have in this country on Saturday, the election of a new president. Yes. And, of course, National Assembly members. Now, looking at the electoral umpire, INEC, Yesterday, the chairman of the PDP accused Enoch of working with the PDP. No, they say it uh, again. The chairman. Yes, of... the chairman of APC uh -huh, okay. accused Enoch of working with the PDP with a view to swaying the election in their favor. Mm -hmm. And not too long ago, the PDP also came out to say that Enoch is working with APC to yes. rig the elections. Yes. From your own assessment of the preparation so far, can you say that INEC should be trusted to deliver a free, fair, and credible election on Saturday? Well, good question. Um, I have never trusted INEC. Um, any INEC, whether the, the, the 2015 type or this type of INEC, they may be doing certain things to show that they are in support of the opposition, you know, and they are doing certain things to show that uh, they are not favoring the ruling party. They may be doing that, but at the end of the day, they exhibit their cloven hoof, and you would see that the whole thing is in favor of the ruling party. They may just be doing that one. 
uh, it could be a trick. It could be a trick. But I, I don't see anything that is done to favor the opposition. I don't see that one. All that I can see are acts of violence or acts that can lead to violence, you know, perpetrated by, uh, by, by the ruling party, you know, what with the, uh, uh, you know, body bags, you know, body bag treatment, statement by the Kaduna state government, a governor, and what about what happened in, uh, in Abekuta a few days ago? You see, these are, these are acts that can uh, create violence, cause viol create violence during, before and during the election. So it's not true. They may be playing tricks. So it doesn't may make me to trust Enek and then say, okay, they are, doing, they are favoring one party. It's, it's not so. In River State, where they may be talking about, it's very clear. You want, to, you want to make impunity to be the uh, governing state of, of this country, it's not, it, it's not right. And the judiciary has said, no, you don't do that. that. Even if you are not a lawyer, you will see clearly, when the law says this primary, the, these primaries are not good, and you went ahead to present the, the nominees, you know, taken from the, uh, the primaries to INEC, of course, no court of law would take that one. And it has taken them to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has finally said no. So in what way could you say ANEC is trying to favor the opposition? It's not, it's not true. It's just a trick. It's just a trick. OK, if I may just follow up uh, there. Now, a couple of weeks ago, there, were, there was this redeployment of commissioners of police yes. across the country. Only yesterday, the newspapers are reporting today, according to a memo from the DSS, that 29 heads of DSS in, this, in 29 heads of DSS in 29 states have also been redeployed. Yes. Is there any value in this redeployment to helping that the security agencies are neutral? Will it enhance that? Neutrality. Yes, the security agencies cannot be neutral because you see, it starts from the last, uh, the 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 last IGP, you know, up to the appointment of the new one. How can the security agencies be neutral? You know, why do you have to redeploy uh, security personnel from where they are now? where they know very well, you deploy them to areas they probably don't understand. Now, it means certain, certain security officers, or all the security officers may have been, you know, pre-warned against doing certain things in favor of the decision, and they're doing all, everything in favor of the ruling party. That's the way I look at it. Why do you want to do that? Those people who who will do things that are favorable to the ruling party. If we know them, we take them to this place. Know those people who, will, who, who are stubborn and will not do this one, we take them to this place. You know, they take them to states with very scanty population, and uh, those people, the, those states that have uh, centers of population, they will take those people that are favorable to the, uh, to the uh, existing administration to such places. I don't know whether you under, I have explained it very well. Those people that will, be, uh, that will favor the security officers, that will favor the ruling party, will be taken to centers of population, you know, like Kano, like Lagos, you know, like Port Harcourt, you know, like Kaduna, and so on and so forth. And those people who, who may be seen to be stubborn, the security officer that may be seen to be stubborn, will be taken to small towns, small states, you know, with scanty population, maybe 1 million or 1.2 million and so on. That is the way I looked at it. But let me just reinforce this your argument. Yes. Don't you think when commissioners of police or heads of agents have stayed long in a state, they get chummy with the state governors? In which place those state governors are better in a position to influence them to do their bidding? And well, that this kind of sudden movement, mm. few days to the election, 
should help checkmate that? Uh, no, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Because any the commissioner of police, um, at the end of the day, you know, when even when they say um, state governors are the secure, chief security officers of their states, the Constitution gives the light of that one. The Constitution says, more or less, that the, the chief security officer of every state is the president. You know, so they are not at, at any time responsible to any state governor, because they know that their own boss to whom they are responsible is the president, as far as the Constitution is concerned. So there is not time they will become so chummy with any, any state gov governor enough to justify their, you know, uh, they are favoring uh, the, the, the government. They are responsible in the final analysis to the president. And therefore, they, ca they can ill afford to do anything contrary to the interest, overall interest of the presidency. That's the way I look at it. It's, can it's not possible. They know that the, the, the president is the chief security officer of everywhere, the nation and all the states of the federation. And they are responsible to... Commissioners of police are responsible to the IGP. IGP is responsible to, to, uh, to the president. So, you see, there is, they can't do, do anything that is contrary to the interest of the president. Well, staying on security, um, some states have been referred to as the flashpoint states going into these elections. Yes. Uh, what are, your, in your own view, the flashpoint states in this election? Yeah, okay, flashpoint state could be those, you know, where you expect problems, where you expect some kind of violence. Yeah, so can during, you also states? Before and during the election and even after the election, mm -hmm. you know, such states. I don't want to know, name them so that the states may not think I'm their enemies. Um, what about the regions? Would you give us the regions where you think the states are? You mean the regions? Of the states. If you're not going to mention the particular states, can you at least give us the regions where they are located? Zones. The zones. Well, the zones, well, um, the, the northwest, for example, mm -hmm. the, not, the entire northwest, um, the entire northwest, even the southwest, the southwest, and the northwest in particular, could be regarded as flashpoints. And um, so the place must, those places must be inundated with security officers to nip in the board any, any you know, insecurity challenges. Well, I'm going to mention a particular state. River State, yes. in, the, in the past, has mm. been known to have uh, violence during elections, mm. uh, considering the political gladiators going into the elections. But now that um, the APC isn't fielding candidates there, yes. do you think that this is respite for, for people of the state uh, going into these elections to know that perhaps, just perhaps, mm. uh, it will be violent-free this time around? Well, um... I think it will be, you know, they can vote. There is a, can, a presidential candidate. There is a presidential candidate in River State. That is the, the Muhammad Buhari yes. president. Good. So at least there is election there for the president. Yes. Uh -huh. Now, uh, we can, I wanted to mention South South and particularly River State. Okay. But now that they are not fielding candidates, you use the correct word, respite. There, are, there may be a respite. And uh, I don't think, I don't foresee anybody rioting, uh, going haywire because they are, they, their presidential candidate has not been elected. It's only in the gubernatorial areas, you know. Uh, but th 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 that's where there is a respite. Because there is no gubernatorial candidate for River State, I mean, it's smooth sailing for the, for the incumbent uh, governor. And everybody should know that that is the decision of the court, not of the incumbent governor. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they want to vote, if they cannot, if they, if they don't want to, uh, if they don't want to vote for the incumbent governor, they sit back in their homes. But I foresee a situation but in there which... there are other candidates. 
It's not just APC and PDP. Yes, I mean, it, that, that's so that they that there are they two. Might have other candidates. Yes, there are two other candidates, but then uh, they, some people may not want to waste their votes. In other words, the people, they, you know, when you pitch other candidates against the incumbent candidate, you know, even if you cast your vote for such people, the, how, what, what, what's the, uh, what's the uh, position? How do we know that all such other minor candidates may win? It is the major candidate that will, that will actually win, you know, whether they, these other people belonging to APC cast their votes or not. Because you can see people are already in PDP, they will cast their votes definitely for their candidate, that's the incumbent governor. Now, uh, some other people may change their opinion about, well, if we don't have any candidate for governor, uh, we are not going to waste our votes. We are going to cast our vote for this incumbent governor. Uh, that's the position I, uh, I can foresee. Sorry to go back to the issue that we started off with, yes. Zamfara State. We've just received a letter from the APC yes. to, the, to INEC dated 13th of February and signed by the chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomole, yes. urging the commission to give effect to the judgment of the high courts in Zamfara. Mm. Now, there's a position that submission of a, of a nomination at this point is statute barred, mm. even when it's not the fault of the complainant. Yes. Is this correct? Yes, correct. It is correct. I mean, he is already statute bad, and that's it. No, no, twenty letters from the government, from the chairman of APC, can yield any dividend in this matter anymore because already statute bad, and it's statute bad. If you don't do that, that is uh, throwing the judiciary to the winds. You just say, well, whatever the the court, because the matter also went to the uh, the court of appeal. Remember? Yes. Uh -huh. So you cannot undo what the judiciary has done in this matter. We go by the rule of law. We are governed by the rule of law, you know, and that is it. Anything done, you must be able to point your fingers at the law, saying that you should do that or you should not do that. The law now says, don't do it. You cannot fill any candidate at the wee hours of the election. You can't do that one. So he's already started bad, and he started bad. What, if anybody is raising any fury or making cry havoc to, to her heavens, it cannot be done. It, can, it won't be done. Yes, it's statute bad, it's statute bad. Thank you, sir, for that clarification. And on that note, we end our discourse. Thank you for all okay. your contributions. It's my pleasure. Thank you very it's my much. pleasure. Yes, it's a big pleasure having you. Thank today. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's time now for a short break on the morning show. When we return, we'll have a Rise News correspondent, Oji Okpe. Join us to review the headlines of today's newspapers. Stay with us.